And everybody said, Amen. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you to tonight's uh, leadership development session in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray as the Lord is developing me, I'll develop you too. Amen. We'll be growing together. Amen. I thought there'll be a greater amen. amen. And those outside, can I hear your amen? amen. Wonderful, you're even nearer than I thought. Praise the Lord. And those uh, on the other side in the school everywhere, we are connected together. And I pray that the power of the Lord will touch everyone everywhere. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Thank you for the joy of coming together. Thank you for your people here tonight. And thank you for all our leaders, all our uh, people who are everywhere. And we're listening to the world together. We pray you touch every life, even tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. This revival you have brought to every heart will continue. Amen. The fire will continue to burn. This work will prosper in our hands. Amen. Nobody will be left out in Jesus' name. Once again tonight, teach every one of us. Train every one of us. Transform us in Jesus' name. We will pray that everyone will be blessed in the meeting tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Consider we're looking at 2 Kings chapter 6. In 2 Kings chapter 6, reading from verse 1. 2 Kings chapter 6, reading from verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. That word straight, you understand? As you look at the spelling, it means too small, too narrow. It's too compacted and we're crowded together. And it's not enough for us. In verse 2 it says, Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. You will see the foresight of the sons of the prophets. These were the people being trained for prophecy and for ministry and for a great mission. And they understood that where they were, the sons of the prophets were increasing. And the place was now too small for them. The place that was so right before, adequate before, was not adequate anymore. And before the man of God even spoke and said, Don't you think we need to do something? Don't you think we need expansion? They themselves noticed that they said, This place is too small. And this place is too straight. And then they said, after they had said it was too small, they said, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, we'll take some beams together, and we're going to expand the place. And he said, they should go. But then they continue, look at verse 3. And one said, be content, be satisfied, be pleased, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. We are going together. Amen. We are doing it together. Amen. One hand is carrying, the other hand is also carrying. And nobody is going to be idle in this work in Jesus' name. Amen. It says, and they came out to Jordan and they cut down wood. You see, it's they and they and they, all of them doing everything together. But look at the verse 5. And as one was failing, a tree, a beam, cutting down the beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it thither. And the iron did swim. That's a miracle. Miracles will be following us in Jesus' name. Verse 7. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out a sand. And what happened? And he took it. Tonight we are looking at this message. The urgent recovery of your supernatural cutting edge. The cutting edge, the axe, fell into the water. 
And when they lost that, anybody could have kept on cutting without the cutting edge and without the axe. But that would be a waste of time. But you realize, therefore they said, we need to recover this. And as we are working for the Lord, busy for the Lord, sometimes the cutting edge might be lost, might just be missing. And then we need to recover that. And we need to recover that urgently. As you look at the story I've read to you, it was time for expansion. Do you realize that? They said it was, a, it was time for enlargement. It was time for greater impact and for progress. Therefore, all the sons of the prophet saw the need. And the same thing with the church today. As we look at this time, it's a time for expansion. And it's a time for enlargement. It's a time for greater impact in our community and for greater progress. And all the four sons and daughters of prophets and sons and daughters of the Lord and sons and daughters of the kingdom of God in this great ministry, we must see that together. And so they all add number one, the clarity of perception clarity of perception. There was none of those uh, sons of the prophets that said, is this the time? Do we need to bother at this time? Should we put all our energies together and do this? Everyone had, number one, clarity of perception. Number two, they had unity of purpose. This one single thing they were united about. They wanted to all go out and get this done. Expansion, that's the word for the day. Enlargement, that's the principle for the hour. Progress, that is the watchword for this time. And not only that, they had willingness to expand. Willingness to expand. And there wasn't anybody saying, if the place is too small for us, why don't we look at the people that have just come and then tell them to go and look for a place by themselves. No, they said, this place is necessary for everyone. And therefore, they had this willingness to expand. Number four, they that submission to the corporate will. The corporate will. That is, it's not an individual will here, individual purpose here, individual um, kind of a projection here. The corporate will. That is, all of us knowing together this is the will of God to be done at this time. And so they all add that. Not only that, they add the readiness to work. The readiness to they say, let us go. Let us go, and each of us will get something done. You know, sometimes uh, there are people who are praying, God, expand the church, God, uh, help us evangelize the community, but the willingness and the readiness to walk may not be there. But thank God, all these sons of the prophets, they had that, and they had consecration for service. Consecration for service. The things they didn't have, they went out and they got them. The one that didn't have an axe said, when I get there, I'm going to do an axe and therefore they went to borrow everything was made ready and made available finally they had inner motivation with personal drive inner motivation it wasn't Elisha the man of God pushing them driving them and saying what are you doing why don't you rise up everybody is walking why are you not walking there was inner motivation with personal drive unity on this one thing that's the thing uh, the ministry or the work of the hour and the labor of that particular time that unity we need and i pray the unity we see in our midst now will maintain it in jesus name in first corinthians chapter 1 verse 10 First Corinthians chapter 1, we're reading from verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that you all go the same direction, that you all work on the same thing, that you all set your mind on this expansion, on this enlargement, on this greater impact, on this goal, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions, there be no discord, there be no disagreement among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. All these sons of the prophets 
prophets will see that's what we'll see about them united together on this one goal on this one thing that with one mouth they said what they said with one heart they purposed what they purposed and with one zeal they pursued what they were pursuing Romans chapter 15 Romans chapter 15 we're reading from verse 6 that ye may with one mind and one mouth one mind and with one mouth you see that's the secret of success in unity there is strength in unity there's authority in unity there is success in unity there is progress that one mind one mouth with one mind and one mouth we glorify god even the father of our lord jesus christ that's what the Lord is expecting from us, that at this time uh, there will be nobody that is standing on the fence or sitting on the fence, and there will be nobody that is discouraging anyone uh, outside the fence somewhere, but with one mind and one purpose and one mouth, we're all for this thing, that this place is too narrow. As we look at the population of our state, we look at the population of our local government, we look at the population of our region, and then we look at how many members we have in the church we say this is too small it's like uh, Jesus has the minority and Satan has the majority and as you look at the population you look at the population for example and you have a million one million in a particular community and you look at the church and it is 1,000 when you're looking at 1,000 you say we have a big church, we have a great church, don't say that yet look at the proportion of one thousand to one million it is less than one percent it's a fraction of one percent you know the meaning of that the meaning of that is that jesus has a fraction of one percent and satan has more than 99 percent then you see it's not fair because jesus died for everyone in that community in your community jesus died for everyone and if satan has the majority of the people heaven has a little just a little fraction that's the reason why we join with the sons of the prophets and we're saying this is too small this is too narrow this is too straight and all of us with all the strength we have and unitedly together we're going forth and we're going to depopulate the uh, kingdom of satan in jesus name Amen. jesus is the one that died for everyone he shared his blood for everyone and because of what he has done we want to go out with that same zeal and that same strength and make sure that with one mouth and one mind this work is done in philippians chapter 1 philippians chapter 1 reading from verse 27 only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of christ did you hear that only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of christ you know there are conversations that are that do not befit the gospel of the lord jesus christ there are thoughts that do not befit the work of the lord i want you are thinking uh, they, what are we looking for look at our church this one is enough all those people who are perishing let them perish all those people that jesus died for and they are not saved and they know that the church is here but they not come by themselves why are we sweating why are we running after them if they want to get saved they know where the truth is let them come when you talk like that that's a conversation that is not becoming the gospel of our lord jesus christ but when you say he died for them and because he died for them we're reaching out to them we're running after them we're preaching to them we're distributing tracts to them we're building churches for them we're making sure that whatever we can do sacrificially we're going to do so that the people are going to be saved that's the manner of life that is becoming to the gospel of the lord jesus christ look at that again only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of christ that whether i come and see you or else be absent i may hear of your fears that you stand fast how in one spirit in one spirit it's no disagreement in one spirit and with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel striving together for the faith of the gospel as they went to walk these sons of the prophets the axe head fell off 
It fell into deep waters to continue to work and they will achieve nothing you know, unless we retrieve and recover immediately that lost accent. If he didn't do that immediately, the current of the river can sweep away that uh, accent and he'll not be able to get it anymore. The accent is pointing to the penetrating drive. The accent is pointing to the strategic planting tomb. The accent is pointing to indispensable courage. It's pointing to supernatural impact. If we've lost that, or if it is winning immediately, we must get everything recovered. The spiritual power will be recovered. And the bony zeal will be recovered. The penetrating drive must be recovered. And if we're going to recover that, recover that, we must do it immediately and urgently. That's what we're talking tonight on the urgent recovery of your supernatural cutting edge. You'll recover. You'll get everything back. And everything we need for this work spiritually, the Lord is going to supply in Jesus' name. As we look at the passage, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the longing and the readiness for church expansion. Number one, the longing and the readiness for church expansion. Number two, the loss and the recovery of the cutting edge. The loss and the recovery of the cutting edge, the loss and the recovery of the cutting edge. Number three, our liberation and release for a constant endowment. Our liberation and release of a constant endowment. Tell me number one. The longing and the readiness for church expansion. We're coming back to Second Kings chapter 6. You see their longing here. You see their desire here. You see their passion here. You see their pursuit here. And you see the readiness with which they pursued this expansion. In our own case, not church expansion. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too strange for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And, he say, and one said, Be content, be pleased, be satisfied. I, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. So he went with them. You see here, let's say for example now we have a state of us here. He goes with them. Or we have them. A reaching of us here. He goes with them. Or we have a group pastor. He goes with them. Or we have a DC pastor. He goes with them. And you will know by the grace of God, it's not something that, you know, the GS is just throwing out. And it's not uh, taking part in that. While I'm here at the headquarters, I'm also here in, there in the state. I go to this. I go to that. I go to that place. And then we come back. And then we continue. We're doing it together and as we are doing it together the same success I see you will see in Jesus name and this same power you receive in Jesus name because the Lord has given us the commission He's giving every one of us and we are getting it done and it's going to be done in Jesus name look at what those people said they said the place is too straight for us and if it's too straight for us if it's too small for us it's too small for the king of kings it's too small for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's too small. Uh, look at it. 2,000 years have gone after Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. And look at the people that are still outside the kingdom. And yet, he is not willing that anybody should perish. He wants everyone to know the Lord and to come to the knowledge of salvation and to be born again. And yet, look at the millions of people on the streets, in the communities, in the local governments, in the villages, in the towns, everywhere that have not received 
this gospel. If the place is too small for us, then it's too small for him. And because it's too small for him, that's why we're reaching out and that's why we're going to touch more lives. You will do it, I will do it, we will do it together. In Joshua chapter 17, Joshua chapter 17 and we're reading from verse 14 joshua chapter 17 verse 14 and the children of joseph spake unto joshua saying why hast thou given me but one lord and one portion to inherit sin i am a great people for as much as the lord has blessed me hitherto here the descendants of joseph they came and he came to joshua they said why are we having just one portion? Why are we having just this little portion? It says, seeing I am a great people. And look up here for a moment. We need to understand. Sometimes when we read scriptures, we don't fully understand. It's like uh, you have this tribe and this tribe and this tribe. How many tribes in the land of Israel? 12 tribes and now you have uh, Joseph. Joseph actually had Ephraim and Manasseh. He actually had two tribes and when you add their population together they ran into thousands and thousands more than the tribe of Asher or the, tri or the tribe of Dan or the tribe of uh, Reuben and then that's why they said well he has one plot, I have one plot, but this one is too small. The point is this, you look at a particular state, for example, and the population is like 8 million. You look at another state, and the population is 2 million. And then uh, the person in a, a population of 2 million state is saying, but well, praise the Lord, we have, uh, you know, about uh, 2,000 members. And the one in a state of 8 million say, praise the Lord, we're as good as the other people because we have 2,000 people. No, you're not as good. You're working percentages because he has 2,000, you have 2,000, your own population is 2 million, this population is 8 million. They're different. That's what uh, the tribe of Joseph, uh, Manasseh and Ephraim, that's what they're saying. If we come to the city, you're looking at a particular community. Although in Lagos here, yeah, we say Alimosho Old District, we say Agege Old District, we say Ikeja Old District, and then as we look at just those three, uh, for, for example, we say, but praise the Lord. We have, how many churches do we have in Ikeja? We have um, about, uh, let's say, uh, just roughly about uh, 70. And then, we, again, praise the Lord, we have 72. And then, Alima Shop, praise the Lord, we have 75. Why don't you read too badly? 70, 72, 75? Uh-uh. You cannot compare. If you look at the population of Alima Shop, draws into millions. Check up. If you look at Hagege, it runs into millions. If you look at Ikeja, it's a different story. And because of that, you're not going to say, well, there are as many churches like this, like this, like this. They're not equal. And then we need to wake up and say, for this place, this one is too small. For that place, this one is too small. Because Christ died for everyone and the population is there. And we don't know when Jesus will come. We must reach out. I said we must reach out who are the people to reach out you'll do it and the Lord will give you everything you need in Jesus' name. Uh, let's come back to this. Look at verse 15. And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, since you realize that, then get thee up to the wood country and cut down for thyself there in the land of the parasites and of the giants, if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. You see, that's the challenge, the longing, the desire that we know that this one is too small for us and therefore we're going to reach out Isaiah chapter 28 Isaiah chapter 28 look at this verse 20 and look at the way it sounds Isaiah chapter 28 what's the verse verse 20 it says the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on 
and the covering narrower than that he can wrap himself in it. Have you ever had the experience is a time of Amatan? Is a time of winter? Is a time of biting cold? It's so cold, and yet you go to a bed at night, and the bed is shorter than the length of the body. You're trying to place there. Your head is you know, way beyond the edge, and your legs from the knees way beyond the edge of the bed. You feel so uncomfortable, and you want to do something about that. Not only that, even the wrapper you are trying to put on is so narrow and is so short, and the cold is biting on you. And so you say something you know, must be done. That's the picture we have here. It's telling us that look at that verse 20 again. For the bed is shorter than a man than that a man can stretch himself on, and the covering narrower than that a man can wrap himself in. We will we'll do something. I said we'll do something. Next time when you go to you know your church, as you're going, you look at the people that will pass on the road, the teeming multitudes. They're going here, they're going there, they're going there, and it's like uh, all these people have never heard it's Sunday morning or it's Monday Bible study in the evening, and then you are going to the church uh, location and you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people and they're just moving. By the time you get to the church, it's like uh, you know, you look at the church and you compare with the people you are passing. As you see the bed is shorter than that a man can stretch himself on and the wrapper the covering is narrower than a man can wrap himself in and something will be done Amen. look at verse 26 verse 26 for his God does instruct him to discretion and does teach him that he is, he realizes the bed is shorter God will instruct him. God will teach him. Now that you realize that that bed is too short to take your length, to take your height, and that that trapper is too narrow to take you or to cover you, then it says, if you're listening to the Lord, it will, the Lord will show you that you need to do something. Expansion must come. Enlargement must come. Progress must come. For as God does instruct him to discretion, the Lord will instruct you Amen. as to what to do. You'll get more lands you'll get more places. You'll build more churches. And you'll get the people to come in. And it says, and the Lord does teach him. The Lord will teach us. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 49. Isaiah chapter 49. We're reading from verse 19. Isaiah chapter 49. Reading from verse 19. For thy waste and the desolate places and the land of thy destruction shall even now be too narrow by the reason of the inhabitants. Because of the population, because of the inhabitants, the places we have, it says, is now narrow and they shall swallow thee up and shall be far away the children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other shall say again in thine ears the place is tell me to stretch for me give me a give a, give place to me that i may dwell uh, look up here for a moment uh, it depends uh, uh, sometimes uh, the information is now at our finger at our fingertips if you have the kind of phone that shows the population of the world uh, that but that phone it will show you uh, sometimes you have the population and it's showing you the births those who are being born and those who are dying is subtracting and is adding you just leave on the phone for one minute and you will see the thousands of people that die all over the world within that minute and the millions of people that are born into the world and so the children that are being born as they look at us they say well what provision are you making for us and the people look at our city for example if you will do the study of Lagos you'll find that there's influx of people in, into Lagos every day every day I think uh, the last count I had is about 80,000 every day coming to Lagos coming to Lagos they're coming from all over and the population is increasing what used to be 17 million in Lagos 18 million in Lagos is now more than 24 million people and with the increase every day 
Sunday, things are just expanding. Uh, and uh, when you, for example, when we got to IBTC at your body, you know, some years ago, 1980, all those people at Ikbaja, Ayobo, and all those places who lived there. It was like, why in the jungle? If you come to that place now, is that a jungle? A millions of people there now. And then as you go to other parts, so you know, you go to Bagada. When we had, uh, you know, Bagada, and we, we were there before, and we're soon getting back there in Jesus' name. Yeah. As you go to Shuli, you go to Remiji, and all those places, it's like, when did all these places start? Because everywhere is expanding. And it's like Ikorodu and uh, Lagos now, it's like they're building all together. They're just there. And as you look at Lagos State, it, the people that are coming in. They're saying, what is church? A place we can worship. A place we can follow the Lord. And everybody is saying the place is too narrow. What the sons of the prophets were telling Elisha, and they were saying, this place is too small. This place is too narrow. That's what the people are telling us today. And we're going to expand as the population is expanding in Jesus' name. Otherwise, the population will be expanding and will be diminishing. And then Jesus will come and million and millions and millions of people will perish when you are there when I am there when we are there to give them the gospel they will not perish on our nose they will not perish on our eyes they will not perish we're going to reach out to them we realize now the place is too narrow we have the longing we have the desire we have the passion we have the zeal and we have the readiness so that the people we're going to reach out to them in jesus name look at Isaiah chapter 51 verse 3 Isaiah chapter 51 verse 3 for the lord shall comfort zion he will comfort all her waste places. He will make a wilderness like Eden. He will make your wilderness like Eden. And then it says, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. And joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. The Lord will do it. As the Lord said that in the Old Testament, the same thing the Lord observed in the New Testament. We're coming to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9. We're reading from verse 37. Then says he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Can you analyze that verse? The, the harvest truly is plenteous. What was he talking about? He was talking about the population. He was talking about the number of inhabitants there. He was talking about the people that are ready to be reached, but they're not rich yet. He was talking about people that need to be saved, and they were not saved yet. And then what did he mean by the laborers are few? He meant the, pa the pastors were few. He meant the leaders were few. He meant the locations where you could bring those people to, they were few in comparison with the population. That's what he meant. That's what he said. Look at that again. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, plenteous, many, multiples. And then he says, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. It will be done in Jesus' name. You see, the exaltation of Christ demands church expansion. If Christ has been exalted, if the Father has exalted the Lord Jesus Christ, and he has a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, how many knees will bow? Every knee will bow. You have a million people. And when God the Almighty looks at the one million people, He says, I have exalted my only begotten Son. He is the only Savior. He is the appointed Savior. He is the only Redeemer. And every soul of these one million people must bow to my Son. Otherwise, they perish. And then you have out of those one million people, only one thousand that are bowed the knee unto the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the Lord is telling 
telling us that the exaltation of Christ demands church expansion. He died for all. He provided salvation for all. He calls all to repentance and he commands the church to reach all and preach to all. If the community has been saying it's about one million and the church is uh, one thousand, uh, when you put uh, one million, that's one plus uh, six zeros and then you divide that by one, uh, uh, you have one thousand, uh, you're going to have one in uh, one thousand. That is one tenth of one percent and that is too small for the Lord Jesus Christ. I said it's too small for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand. Let's say now a landlord has built a house. And uh, let's say the space of the house is where we are now. And uh, the landlord himself, you divide this uh, landmass where we are, you divide to 1,000 places. And as you divide to 1,000 places, you give that corner, which is one out of 1,000, you give it to the landlord and then you give the rest even if you if you had given the rest to his children we say okay it's for the children if you gave the rest to his relatives we say yes it's for relatives but no you give the rest to his enemies says yes we know you are the landlord but these your enemies we know they hate you we know they killed you they will kill you we know they will destroy you but all the same we're going to divide this apartment we give you one part out of a thousand and we give the other people people 999 out of a thousand that's not fair is that fair that's what we're doing to the Lord Jesus Christ that he has that small part and Satan and the demons and the religions of the world and darkness and secret society they're having all the minds and the hearts of those people and Satan never died for anyone he never sacrificed for anyone but the Jesus who sacrificed for them and then he told us go and tell them that I died for them go and tell them I want them to be saved and go into all the world and preach the gospel to how many people? Every creature, every creature. We have not done it. That's why we're waking up at this time. That's why we're seeing the exaltation of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ, and everything Christ has done demands at this time that the church will expand. And this church will expand. I said your church will expand. His church in your community will expand in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, Acts of the Apostles. We're looking in at chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 4. In verse 4 it says, And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. I pray that this verse will be said of us now. Not a few. Not a few. I said not a few. As we rise up and get the work done, it will be said in Jesus' name. Look at verse 6. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and the certain brethren in unto the rulers of the cities, crying, These men that tell me, these men that what did they do? They turned the world upside down. They come hither also. And look at that. Already they've gone to Jerusalem. Already they've gone to Judea. Already they've gone to Samaria. Already now they're going to the rest of the world. And the people recognize. Remember at that time there wasn't any radio. Remember at that time no television. Remember at that time no internet. But all the same information got to them. How did they know that they've turned the world upside down? Side up. If something is happening, for example, in the southeast, and if there were no radio, no television, no newspaper, nothing, you will not know that anything is happening there. But you know what? They knew. How did they know? Because they plant church here, they planted church here, they planted church here, and they planted church everywhere. And when their people came on vacation, or they came for any feast or whatever, any ceremony, they tell them there's something happening where I'm coming from. There's church everywhere. Believe are everywhere that's why now and then the believers themselves the apostles they didn't say who will say we have not tried look at that now we've turned the world upside down they were still searching they were making research is there any place we have not reached is there any place we have not covered that's how they discovered this place and that's why when they got there they said 
What are you doing here? You have covered the whole world already. You have turned the world upside down. Are you not satisfied? They said, no, Christ died for you too. And so they shouted out and they said, the people that have turned the world upside down, they have come hither also. And by the grace of God, all the places we have gone, lives are changing. Lives are being transformed. And then we're making research. We're looking. And we're getting to other places. And we'll soon hear them say, the people that have turned the world upside down, they have come here also. We're not going to leave any stone unturned. We're not going to leave any place neglected. We're going to go everywhere. And we're going to come there also, get there also, reach there also, evangelize there also. We're going to do it in Jesus' name. Am I talking your language? Do you have the same mind, the same passion? Will it be done? It's going to be done. I said it's going to be done. Who are the people that will do it? We'll do it together. And it will prosper in our hearts in Jesus' name. Tell me point number two there. The loss and the recovery of the cutting edge. This is what we need. We need this cutting edge to keep, to keep on. We need to keep on sharpening it. The vision, the passion, the focus, the drive, the motivation, and then the purchasing of land and the getting of the people and the congregations together and the training of the leaders and put a leader there, a leader there, a leader there, mass evangelism going on, personal evangelism going on, crusades going on, so that in every community there is a standing living church. Not just church, a living church, a vibrant church, a dynamic church, a church with a resurrection power it will be done in jesus name but you know as they were cutting the beams then the axe head fell off look at this in second kings chapter six second kings chapter six i'm reading from verse four so he went with them and they went uh, and they and when uh, they came to jordan they cut down the wood but as one was failing uh, a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed when it fell off he didn't just say i'm not going to allow the man of god to know my carelessness because that's carelessness before the axe head could fall off like that as you're cutting you'll be feeling it in your hand that axe head is shaking that axe head is loose that axe head is not firm with the rim and with the wood but he kept on he kept on cutting until the axe head fell off and then some people would have said I don't want to reveal my weakness. I don't want to reveal my carelessness. I don't want to reveal my laxity. I don't want to reveal my shortcoming. But he cried out immediately. And he said, alas, it was borrowed. You know, ministers, evangelists, preachers, soul winners, church planters, Christian workers, church leaders become sometimes ineffective sometimes unproductive when the keen cutting edge of the spirit's power is lost and that's the time we need to realize instead of just moving on and going on and going on even though the cutting edge has been lost we need to say something will be done immediately uh, let's look at osea cutting edge gone the passion gone the insight gone, the zeal gone, and yet we're there. It's like somebody is a leader, he still has the name of the leader, the position of a leader, the uh, nomenclature of a leader, or he has uh, the recognition of a leader. But really, the zeal is no more there. The cutting edge is gone. The passion is no more there. The cutting edge is gone. The vision is no more there. The cutting edge is done. And the aspiration is no more there. The cutting edge is done. But it's just occupying position. It's just going position. He wakes up in the morning. He said, I am pastor so and so. Okay, you're pastor so and so. I'm evangelist so and so. I'm the teacher. I'm the one appointed here. And I'm in charge of this. You're in charge of the people 
people are perishing. You're in charge. The people are dying. We keep the name, but then the excitement, enthusiasm, the evangelistic zeal, and the passion, the fire is not there. That's what we are going to recover today. We recover in Jesus' name. Hosea chapter 7. Hosea chapter 7. I'm looking at verse 9. It says, Strangers have devout his strength, and he knoweth it not. Look at that. Look at that. This man, as he was cutting and cutting and cutting, and the accent fell into the river, he knew. He knew. He didn't just continue, but there are people that they don't have the passion anymore, the fire anymore, the zeal anymore, and the vision to say, we're getting that place. We're getting to that place. And there's no motivation. There's no inner drive anymore. And yet they don't know anything is missing. That's why it says, strangers have devoured the strength. And he knew it not, yea, gray ears are here and there upon him, and he knows each not. That's a tragedy. When somebody has lost something so important like that, and yet he does not know. We're looking at Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16. We're reading from verse 20. Judges chapter 16. Reading from verse, tell me, verse 20. And, and she said, The Philistines be upon this Samson, and he woke up. He woke out, he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. Tell me what follows. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. He knew not. In this case, the servant knew that the axe said was falling into the river, into the water. But in this case now, Samson said, I'm still all right. You're not all right. I'm still okay. You're not okay. I still have the presence of the Lord. No, you don't. Because something has happened. He slept in the wrong place. He slept at the right time. He was in the enemy territory. And the Philistines were all behind. The people he should conquer. They wanted to conquer him they will not conquer you yeah. and then eventually we're told he went out to shake himself and yet there was no result we're looking at uh, Isaiah chapter 37 Isaiah chapter 37 and we're reading from verse 3 Isaiah chapter 37 verse 3 I'm waiting for you I've opened my own Isaiah chapter 37 verse 3 am I still waiting are you alright now? Yes. Okay, if you are alright, tell me the first two or three words. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I knew, I knew you are wonderful people. Look at verse 3. And they said unto him, Thus saith Ezekiah, This day is a day of trouble, and of rebuke, and of blasphemy. For the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. It, a time of revival. A time of such expansion. A time when the sinners are waiting. The sinners have heard that the Palai Bible Church is waking up. And they are coming to us. We are waiting for them. They want to come and tell us the truth. They want to come and lay hands on us so we can be healed. They want to bring revival to us. If they come to me, I will listen to them. I heard that they are distributing trust. I heard that those people, it's not only their pastor now going around. I hear that they are men, they are women, everybody. They are going around. If they come here, I'm getting ready for them. I'm going to listen to them. I've been watching them. I've been saying, I want to have what they have. I want while they are waiting like that, then the people they are waiting for, our hands are hanging down. Our heads are down. I was saying all these uh, Monday, was there something? Tuesday, there's something. Wednesday, there's another thing. Thursday, there's another thing. And Friday, that one is still there again. Which one are we going to choose? Now let the GS tell us which one is the priority. Whether we should come on Tuesday and then rest until on, a, on a Monday. Or whether we should come on Monday and rest on Tuesday. Let them tell us now. But you know, today, get up, we're going again. Get up, we're going again. When is this going to stop? You want it to stop? Who wants to keep on moving on? You move on in Jesus' name. Because you know, they're waiting for us. The Lord will give you the strength. As your days, so will your strength be in Jesus' name. You will not be weary. You will not be tired. 
this work will prosper in your hands in Jesus name but look at this but look at this it says the children are come to birth but then there's no strength to bring forth that's why we need the cutting edge that's why I want to tell the Lord oh Lord empower us once again empower everyone once again so that everyone we go out in the strength and in the power of the Lord some 74 some 74 I'm reading from verse 9 some 74 and we're reading from verse uh, from verse 9 it says in verse 9 we see not our signs we see not our signs the accent is falling into the river the cutting edge is falling into the river the passion is lost the fire is lost and the enthusiasm is no more there it says we see not our signs there is no more any prophet neither is there any among us that knoweth how long and then we're wondering when will the fire come back from tonight it will come back when the holy ghost power powers of old when will it come back from tonight it will come back in jesus name you see there are people once if the accent is lost if the cutting edge is lost all over the christian world there's christian service all over the christian world there is maybe evangelistic effort but then we see the evidence of the loss of the cutting edge how do we see that number one motion without movement motion without movement look at that car i look at that bicycle and the tire is rolling the tire is rolling and the one sitting there is pedaling pedaling but there's no movement it's just staying there because that bicycle is not moving up it's not making any motion it's just it's not making any movement it's just motion and when christian work is going on you know we're singing we're preaching we're reading bible we're teaching this we're teaching that and there's no increase and there's no growth and there's no expansion that is motion without movement sometimes there's activity without accomplishment activity you find a church is very busy a church we're busy on this and busy on this and busy on that activity without accomplishment there's no power there's no energy to move anything forward or to achieve anything there's no achievement number three enthusiasm without evangelism Everybody is talking about it. Evangelize, evangelize, soul winning, harvesting. We're going to take the land for Christ. The number of uh, the church was 105 at the beginning of the year, and the number is still 105 even at the middle of the year. But they're crying evangelism, evangelism, enthusiasm without evangelism. Number four, preaching without penetration. Preaching without penetration. We have sound doctrine. We understand the bible we know about salvation we know about sanctification we know about holy ghost power we know about correct life holiness without which no man shall see the lord how many of us know that how many of us see that how many of us experience that but it's no penetration we're not penetrating our communities we're not penetrating the local governments we're not penetrating everywhere preaching without penetration communication without conviction or conversion communication we're always communicating 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 but there's no conviction in anybody the conviction that will say that thing i hear i cannot sit down that thing i hear i cannot fold my hand that thing i have heard now i cannot just sit back there is conviction and then you move out that communication produces conversion and then number six persistence without progress have you known people that they keep on they're persistent they're persistent they're persistent they keep on doing that thing that thing they're keeping on and they're doing it but there's no progress and there is no result to that persistence that means the power the power to move us on is not there the energy to drive us on is not there it's just a persistence and yet there's no progress number seven is prayer without power Find people that will gather people together. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Yes, we understand. Prayer is the key. If it has faith, prayer is the key. If it's standing on the promises, prayer is the key. If it has expectation, prayer is the key. If it's producing miracle, prayer is the key. If it is moving mountain. But sometimes you find prayer, 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 but there's no power. But all that is just activity. And there's nothing moving on. But now things are going to move. 
I say things are going to move. Number eight, busyness. Not business, busyness. Busy, busy, busy. Busyness without breakthrough. But now we're having breakthrough. Church growth over there. Church planting over there. Church progress over there. Church addition over there. Church multiplication over there. You'll soon find your relatives that you were talking about. You were talking to many years ago and say, Come, come, come. And they showed you somebody else now is reaching them. And then they will write to you. They say, Uncle, cousin, my sister, that thing you are talking about, I got it. You think, uh, Okay, what's she talking about? What do you mean? I said that thing. You troubled me. And you're almost crying. And you say, born again, born again, born again. And I push you away. Somebody came to me and I couldn't resist. Now I'm born again. Which church do you go? Uh, uh, you're asking me? Our church now? Which one is our church? Uh, I'm a member of your church now. We're all the same now. And then you run home and then you see and everything has changed. Because as revival is going on here and you are touching other people's relatives, they are touching your own relative. So that's why we need to recover all that we have lost so that there will be busyness and then there will be breakthrough number nine, exhaustion without exp expansion. There are people that have exhaustion, they labor and labor until they're exhausted, until they're almost falling down dead, but there's no expansion. But now things are going to change. I said things are going to change. We're going to recover the cutting edge. And whatever is being done without the power of the Holy Ghost, that will not contribute to any life or contribute to a dead machinery. We need recovery. Recovery is coming. We need renewal. Renewal is coming. We need revival. Revival is coming. We need restoration. In fact, we need resurrection. Resurrection power. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. It will happen to you today. You will go beyond what you ever dreamt. You'll do what you have never thought you'll do. Because the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ will come upon your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Total recovery. Amen. I said total recovery. Amen. Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 4. And we're reading from verse 31. Acts of the Apostles chapter, uh, chapter 4 verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place was shaking where they were assembled together. And they were all filled. How many of them were filled? I'm part of them. I said I'm part of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness verse 33 and with great power great power great power and with great power give the apostles witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all we're coming to point number three now our liberation and release of a constant endowment liberation and release of a constant endowment. We're coming to Second Kings chapter six. Second Kings chapter six, and we're reading from verse six. Second Kings chapter six, reading from verse six. And the man of God said, Where fell each? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a, a stick and cast it he in hither. And the iron did swim. The impossible will become impossible. Amen. Mountains will move away. Amen. You see the iron, it shall, the force of gravity should have pulled that iron down. But this miracle overcame the force of gravity. Even the torrent, the running of the water that should have uh, disturbed that iron from coming up like that, everything was suspended. Natural powers are going to be suspended. Amen. Satanic powers are going to be suspended. All the things that have been happening before that will not make the mountain to move, all those things will be suspended before you. And as you go, you stretch out your hand, miracles will happen. You lay hands on the sick, miracles will happen. You declare the word, proclaim the word, miracles will happen in Jesus' name. It says, and therefore, he said, take it unto uh, to thee. And he put out a sand and he took it. It will happen. Deuteronomy chapter 33. 
Deuteronomy chapter 33, and I'm reading from verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 25, The shoes shall be iron and brass. The shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. Days of advance, so shall your strength be. Days of outreach, so shall thy strength be. This when difficulties are before you. And those sick people, they are before you. Days of a need, the power of God will go with you in Jesus' name. As thy days, so shall thy strength be. You will become the cutting edge yourself. You will become the battle axe of the Lord. And all the power you need will be granted unto you. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 15. Isaiah chapter 41. We're reading from verse 15. In verse 15, behold, behold, I will make thee a sharp threshing instrument. You yourself today is going to turn you to be another man. And to be another woman. And the power of God will walk without any limitation or restriction in your life in Jesus' name. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. And then it says, thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. It will happen with you. Chapter 49, we're looking at verse 2. Chapter 49, and we're reading from verse 2. Chapter 49, reading from verse 2. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. We're getting the cutting edge back. We're getting the effectiveness back. We're getting the power back. He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand as he hid me and made me a polished shaft. And his quiver he hid, he, he hid me as he hid me. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. God will be glorified in your life glorified in your ministry and you will do exploits for the Lord in Jesus name it tells us in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20 Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20 look at this Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20 uh, you read it yourself one two three go Okay, don't, don't worry. Uh, everybody open, open, open very quickly. Jeremiah, tell me. Chapter 51, tell me the verse. We're waiting for the rest of us. We want to read this together because this is going to happen to you. The Lord is going to possess you. The Spirit is going to overflow in your life. Impossibilities will be possible. Very soon I'm going to be hearing blind eyes getting open through you the lame rising up through you and souls coming to the kingdom through you. Very soon we're going to be finding in every city, every, every community, miracle there, mountain moving there, the lepers being cleansed there, HIV is being cleansed there, miracles happening everywhere. The Lord is going to walk with you. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 20. Everybody want to three go. Read that again. Through you, it will destroy the kingdoms of darkness. It's so sweet in your mouth. I'd like to hear your voice again. One, two, three, go. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee, where is he? Where is she there? You believe? It will be unto you according to your faith. The pronouncement of the word of God will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Kingdoms of darkness will crumble before you. Kingdoms of sin will crumble before you. 
there is nothing that will stand before you. Every place you step, the power of God will go with you. You will possess the land in Jesus' name. Giants will flee before you. Evil paths will flee before you. You will come back and give testimonies. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people will be swept into the kingdom of God. You are the battle axe. And today you are having total recovery. Where are you there? Rise up and tell the Lord, He has made you the battle axe. He has made you the battle axe. And He's saying, Arise and do it. He's trusting. He's trusting. He's depending upon you. He has faith in you. He has confidence in you. He says you are that instrument. And He's going to use this instrument my brother is going to use this instrument my sister is going to use you it's going to use you it will empower you it will endow you and any axe that had been lost any cutting edge that has been lost any authority that has been lost anything you have lost whatever made you to lose it you are recovering tonight and you are saying lord i am sur submissive to you i'm surrendered unto you I give myself, I surrender myself, I give myself, I surrender everything. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. He's ready to use you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, your day has come. Your day has come. You are the man. You are the woman. You are going to reach out. And as you reach out, you are going to cut those trees down. All those paths of darkness will fall before you. You will win souls. You will bring them into the kingdom of God. Church expansion church expansion church expansion expanding here expanding here expanding there expanding everywhere you are the instrument in the hand of the almighty god you will do it you will do it you will do it the lord has called you you will not fail you will not fail forget the failure of the past and forget all the deficiencies of the past and forget all the slowness of the past tardiness of the past the time has come to rise up and move on there's good going to be progress and miracles will be happening through you.